What is up, YouTube? Today we are going to be going over the final of the top five to cover what is currently being played, and that is the top five solo lane gods. They are all going to be warriors today, and we are going to count down from number five all the way to number one, as usual. And we're just going to jump right into it. At number five, we have Ravna. Um, to get right into it and to make it very simple, Rav isn't quite as good as basically the top three. Uh, this four and five slot. To be intertwined, inter interchanged, that's what I meant to say, interchanged and played uh, with whatever matchups or whatever uh, team comps you feel are more comfortable to you. But with Rav, you're basically a backline diving, um, in your face, I want to kill you, solo laner. Uh, you're just going to be annoying, you're going to be on the backline and that is going to be your job in every single team fight. You're going to look for people that have abilities down or actives down or whatever you need to just jump to the back line and kill them with your ultimate uh, you're gonna take no damage in your ultimate which is pretty much the key as to why rob is actually good in this meta and being played in the team fights so fucking well a lot of games you're gonna see the other top five <laughs> solos are banned so rob is what you'll probably default to or look into uh, along with the number four slot and just look to bully in lane look to pressure out take as many buffs as possible early game that is what your job is going to be and then look for team fights look to rotate and join any gold fury team fights in those team fights as i said dive the back line control the hunters control the mages bully them out anytime you can throw abilities at anybody you're gonna do a lot of fucking damage and you should do so with your immunity you're able to dodge a lot of shit a hell of a lot of shit and then with soul laners picking up either a lot of them have Aegis these days which is pretty nutty and then a lot of them are picking up the bracers which are going to heal you so you're going to be nearly unkillable unless you're super out of position. You're going to be easily getting into the back line. You're going to have your control with your slow and your root. And that is going to be what you're looking to do in just about every team. Nothing else, nothing more. Um, he doesn't excel anywhere in the game, uh, more so than the other. So his early game is going to be just fine. Maybe laning phase, you'll get out pushed uh, the first wave or two, but you'll just have to deal with that. Once you're past that, you can just bully out. Look to control the fire creeps as a solo laner. If you have them on respawn, get your jungler to come over and help you if you need to. You'll see a lot more farm. And then anytime you actually do bully out the solo laner, look for their blue buff, take it, get smalls at the very least. That adds up. And that's what you're gonna be looking to do on Rob. Now, number four on the list is Simul Kong. Simul Kong is extremely safe. And with just like I said on <laughs> Ravana, a lot of the other solo laners are being banned. So Sung Wukong is up most of the time, and it is a very obvious choice for you. You're safe with the ultimate. You've got clear, you have extreme poke potential, you can proxy the wave very safely because of the mobility on your three. So you're going to be looking to clear the wave, play safe for the first few levels, and then look to be super aggressive. Look for any poke potential you get, anytime a jungler comes into the solo lane, throw your one at them. Anytime there's nobody in the lane, look to proxy, go behind the Fiend, or go up to the Phoenix, or go behind the tier one tower. Clear the waves, rotate out. As I said, you're safe, you've got the bird to fly away. You've got your boar to knock up if you need to get out with that. And then you have your ultimate where you're immune to CC immune, you're healing, and you can run away really easily. <clears throat> that is going to be your early game and your laning phase, essentially. Team fights is going to be very similar to Rob, except for you can zone a lot more people very easily. So your threat, you have a lot of AoE damage. You've got your spinning slow. You've got your one. You've got your knock up, your stun out of your three, uh, whichever one you want to use. And then you've got your ultimate, which is just a full reset. So basically with Wukong, you're looking to dive the backline, dodge as many abilities as possible in team fights. And by dive the backline, I mean run at them, get in there, slow them, whatever you got to do, you are going to be very tanky. And don't waste your ultimate until you need to. If you're able to zone the backline, especially if you can get the hunter and the mage out of the team fight, your team should essentially win unless the other solo laner is able to do the exact same thing. So your job, team fights, simple. That's why he excels. He's got the kit to do it and then has a reset. That reset is kind of essential to you being annoying as fuck and then with bracer you essentially have a third reset unless they have anti-heal and that is where the other team's gonna have to step up get the anti-heal or you're just gonna take over on wukong number three on the list yeah number three we just did four number three on the list is hercules hercules is extremely annoying in lane uh as a jungler i know personally i hate fucking going over that lane just because early game it's so easy for maybe not easy but it's so Often that a Hercules is going to get a pull and get a stun and you lose three quarters of your life and you're like, fuck, I got to go back to base. So Hercules, you're a bully. You run at people. You get your heal up whenever you take damage. You stun and pull as many people as possible because every time you stun and pull somebody, you're either burning beads or you're getting poked. 
even if you stun and pull the solo laner and push him back in, you pull him and then stun him back into your team, your team's going to get a lot of damage off on that solo laner. That's all you're going to need to look to do. You don't need to get too deep into the back line until you're ready for the team fight. Make sure your team is looking for a team fight when you do that. Hercules, while very tanky and has the heal, if the other team has anti heal, you actually die pretty fucking quick because people are going to be looking for anti heal. Herc is one of the gods where you see it, you get anti heal, you'll have two or three anti heals on the other team, and you're either going to want to avoid those or just understand you're playing into that. Make sure you don't get too far away from your team, don't get caught out, don't get blown up. Now, you have so much control that. Usually that's not a problem, especially in your casuals and your ranked game. You're able to really do whatever you want, bully however you want. You can proxy on this god if you want to. You have pretty good clear. Your level one could be more essential to your jungler being there or you basically playing it correctly. If you have like a Sir Cat or a Susano or a Nem, you can two the wave in together and then have your jungler combo on the creeps and insta kill them. That'll be your best clear potential. With Hercules, once again, you want to bully out in lane, poke as much as possible after clearing, just sit there, use your heal over and over again, try to take as many camps as possible. A lot of the solo laners are going to have the same play idea, at least, in the lane. Um, these three we mentioned are a little bit less able to bully most of the time in the lane. They can struggle a little bit, unless you know your matchups very well. So you can avoid the bullying if you have to, and just look for going for camps and looking for farming. Looking for rotating the team fights. Be at every fire creep. I can't, no matter what god, Hercules, anybody, be at fire creeps. Use your ultimate to steal buffs if you have to. Early game, it's fine for you to ult the other team's blue buff to steal it. Go in, start clearing it, stun it to it, ult it, it's dead. Boom, you have a buff. You can do this to speed buff. You can do that to fire creeps if it's going to secure it. All that farm adds up. Just understand when you do use your ult to clear, it won't be up, and you're not looking for a kill the same way as you would with it being up. Very simple. Next on the list is going to be number two, and that is Osiris. Now, Osiris didn't quite make it to number one just because I personally feel like he isn't quite as safe as some gods. While perfect use of Osiris, using the passive, make sure every team fight, anytime you do fight, your passive is up. Uh, you're using the passive. It doesn't have to be max stacks, but make sure your passive is stacked to a point where it's relevant. The damage mitigation you get out of it is insane. Osiris is a huge bully, an amazing bully. You have... Really good clear and sustain with Death Toll and just autoing creeps in lane. But then you also have the ability to poke because you have a slow. You get the tether, which is going to cause people to do less damage. It's going to stun them at the end of it. You have your two, which is on a short cooldown. The one is on a short cooldown. Just ideally, passive up. Bully the fuck out of the other team. Run at people. Don't be scared, but make sure your pass is up. That's the key to not being scared and not getting fucked. Your passive is so important. Lower level players don't get it. Don't understand. They see Osiris running at people. They see Osiris winning lanes. They don't see why. They don't see that the abilities are being landed to poke. The auto attacks are being used properly to poke and to bully. And then you have passive up. That is very, very, very important. I can't harp on that enough. Super important. So early game, like we said, that's what you're looking to do. Bully, bully, bully. Poke, poke, poke. Throw abilities. Do whatever you can. And use your passive properly. Because of the bullying on Osiris, more so than Hercules, anybody else, you should absolutely control fire creep. 100%. Control fire creeps, control the jungle, control everything you can 100%. That's bully and control. Bully and control over and over and over again. That's it. Team fights, a lot different for Osiris because your passive and your tether are instrumental for you not getting fucked. 100%. You can't just run at people and not get fucked. Osiris will get destroyed if you're not using passive properly. Team fights, it's going to be really important for you to get poke off as well before it starts. Tether the carries. You're diving the mage and the hunter. Try to get both of them tethered. Try to stick on one. Try to make sure they're running away instead of doing damage to you to get out of the tether. That is going to be what you want to do 100%. Don't waste your ult until you're ready to dive. Osiris is amazing at diving, considering the kit, just because of the slows and the abilities. And the tether causes people to run away, which makes diving really easy because you're just running at them while they're running away. The ultimate, though, is going to be your one escape. Your one true, oh shit. You're not some Wukong who has an alt out. You're not fucking Hercules who's going to have consistent heals. You're going to have your passive to help you take less damage. And you have your alt to either dive or run away. So try to pay attention to the team fight. Don't waste your ultimate unless you know you're getting that kill. That's not going to get you killed or your team is diving. Uh, remember your ultimate has anti-heal. So that is going to be important once your team is engaging. And Osiris is that simple. It's really that simple. Just people don't get it. That landing abilities, you need to be able to land your abilities because if you're missing every fucking sickle, every two, you're not going to be bullying. It's not going to happen. And if you're not using your tether and your passive properly, you're just going to get out bullied, which will happen. I've seen it happen many times. 
So that is why Osiris is coming in at number two. And number one, shouldn't be surprised, is Bologna. Bologna's number one because she actually has a little bit more mobility. She's got the ultimate to keep her safe, whether it be engaging or disengaging, because it's going to get protective, prote protective protections. You got the two, which actually excels when you have multiple people around you. So if you're being ganked, you can two, get extra damage out, poke the fuck out of people. You also have the AoE cleave for clear. So you've got the ability to bully. You've got the disarm to sustain and to stop the other person from bullying you. You've got the two, which is going to AoE damage creeps plus any god that's in the fucking creeps or around that you can hit as well. And you've got your one, which is going to block shit. It's going to be mobility. It's going to be a slow. The kit just makes perfect sense. Bologna can bully in lane. You will have harder matchups against some of the gods unless they don't play it properly or you just know the matchups better. So don't come to me for your matchups. I don't know solo lane matchups, but I do 100% know that if you understand how the matchup will go, you can play around it and actually win it. I've seen that happen many times in Pro League. So look to bully in lane. Look to clear. Your clear is amazing. Your, your poke and your bully within the creeps with your uh, cleave up is nasty. It's super underrated. You can proxy whenever you want to very safely. Just because you've got all the ways out. You have the sustain when bullying in lane. If you get poked a little bit, use your three. Heal up as much as possible. It actually does add up very quickly, especially if you have attack speed boots or whatever. If your twos are being canceled. Just make sure you understand why you're building what you're building and how you're playing it. In late game, you can engage with your ultimate. If the other team doesn't have high mobility, if they're playing mages with no mobility, just alt in. Tell your team, let's go, let's fight, alt in. It gives you a lot of protections. You won't die as long as you're building tanky. Please build tanky, by the way. Please don't go second item fucking offensive. Too many solo laners build boots, a tank item, and fucking Jotuns. No. Solo laners build pretty much full defense. Like 99.9% .9 defense. That's all you need. You have high ability damage. You want to be annoying. You have a gold lead, so you're finishing your build early. You have a level lead because you have more XP. Please take advantage of that. 100%. With Bologna, very easy to invade buffs. You have pretty damn good secure because you have four damaging abilities, which not all of the other solo laners have. And just because you're able to run at people and be annoying before the buff spawn. Ideally, that's how you're going to play it. Any auto attack gods, one into them. Auto attack them for a little bit. Disarm when you need to. Anytime you're around multiple people, use your two. Anytime you're engaging in a team fight, use your three. Please don't save your ult. Or sorry, your, not your three, use your ultimate. Please don't save your ultimate for the end of team fights to secure a kill. Be using your ultimate in the middle or the beginning of team fights. The protections are amazing. The engage is amazing. The setup is amazing. It's very underrated. Because people don't like to waste their ultimate. But as you've noticed, even on Hercules, this big damage all, I'm saying use it to clear creeps. Because the little advantages add up a lot more than you may be getting a kill. Or you may be saving that ability and it may be being the perfect time to use it. Don't need the perfect time to use it. You need to fucking use it. Especially in the lower end games, just using your shit will go a lot farther than trying to get this perfect amazing ult. You don't need a four man Bologna ult. Just engaging on the team and having your team being able to engage off of you is enough. That's all you need. Simple as that. Uh, that's going to be your top five solo winners. I don't really have any honorable mentions. Vamana, as you know, is always going to be decent at clearing. And it's going to fall off late game because it's how Vamana works. Uh, it is a nice god to play. It is a pub stomp god. So I guess I will mention it. I just don't think it's that great. Play it when other shit's banned or if that's your comfort pick. Uh, you also have Nike, who is, once again, okay. Uh, the ultimate's really good. Gonna able, You're just going to be able to stand in front of people and be annoying because your ultimate's going to give you half your health back whenever you need it. Well, not half your health back. You need half health bar for a little while. And then you have Odin. Uh, I think Odin's very underrated. You'll probably see a lot more Odin as healing. Whenever healing is in the meta, you will see a lot more Odin, Odin whenever healing's in the meta. Even with the um, Phantom active, it's not the end of the world. Odin does well, high damage, but it is a really risky. It's high risk, uh, high reward potential type thing. If you get fucked on Odin early, you're out of the game. You're literally going to be irrelevant. But if you get a snowball, if you get an early kill, you're able to, uh, thun what's it called? Fucking <laughs> burn bombs and say thunder dunk. You're able to burn bomb onto people and do half of their health. So just remember that when you're picking gods outside of the top five, why you're picking them and what they're going to bring to your team fight for you. That is going to be it for the top five solos. If you guys didn't know this information, um, it is out there. This isn't stuff that's like secret information. You can see in the SBL games, these gods are played a lot. I'll try to give you as much information on any match, not matchup, sorry, any of the reasons the gods are good, why they're played. Uh, whenever I can, I will update these videos, these top five videos, either once every month or two, because that's what people are asking me to do in the comments. If you have any requests, drop them in the comments below. Please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and I will see you all in the YouTube video later on today.